what wedges should I have in my bag is a question that I commonly get asked. So today, I'm gonna to give you a bit of a guide as to what wedges you should be picking. So I've come down to Bearwood Lakes and I'm gonna go through a bit of a wedge fitting today. But Al, before we get into this, you're obviously the tour off manager mm. for Mizuno and you see a lot of players. What's one of the common things and the faults you see when amateurs are picking wedges? Uh, I think the main thing is not having the consideration of what each wedge needs to do and yeah. duplicating up on wedges. A lot of yeah. times you see people carrying maybe a 56 and a 58. There's only two degrees difference there and they're basically doing the same job. Right. So it's looking at how many wedges you're going to carry outside the pitching wedge and what each of those needs to do and how far they're going to go. Excellent. So we're going to go take you through a sort of three-step process which should ideally fill you in on each wedge that you're going to go through your bag. So let's get into stage number one. So stage number one, I've got a pitching wedge in my hand. Why is this so? Why do we start with pitching wedge here? I know I've got this in my bag, but what are we doing? Right, well, basically what we need to work out is how far this will go on, a, on average okay. shots. And then we can work backwards from there. We'll take into account what that loft is. Yeah. Look at how far it's going and then we'll kind of dial back. So then we'll go, we'll work backwards from that. And this is where the gap wedge sort of comes in. Is this the yeah. first wedge you would maybe yeah. look at getting if you're completing your set? Correct, yeah. So anything up to probably 53 degrees we'd, we'd go up to. So it's a case of just hitting some wedges really, just taking into account the average of what mm -hmm. this would be. Yeah. I think one thing to bear in mind now, lofts have got a lot stronger, haven't they? Yeah. So the wedge that you'll probably put in is more like an old pitching wedge, Correct. really, this yeah. one, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, old pitching wedge was kind of 48 degrees, so uh, a gap wedge would be 48 to 52, potentially, with pitching wedges being anywhere from 46 down to, in some cases, even 42 degrees, which is old 9-9. We know now that, let's say, an average 134, mm -hmm. what am I looking for? Is it 10, 20, 15 you're, you're, yards? You're looking uh, around 12 to 15, I'd say. 12 to 15. So, short of the average there, which we said 134. 134, so I, yeah. Ideally, you'd want to hit your next club. 120, Ish. 121. Okay. So, we know, we've measured that and we know that that's 45. Yeah. So logically for me in my head, I'm going around the 50 degree mark. Okay. Because then that's going to give you a nice gap to your, to your next yardage. So okay. 50 degrees, 50 degrees. So we're expecting this now to go around about 120 yeah. is what we're looking for. Nice. This is, I would, I would imagine this is a club that everyone's generally going to hit full, aren't they? Yeah. So it's finding that yardage is the, is the key. One twenty-five, crushed it. There you go. Felt a lot quicker that one. One twenty-one. Yeah. The gap wedge usually is an extension of the of the set of the pitching wedge. You kind of try and match that into what you do through the set because you hit that full. Yeah. As you mentioned, then. I think the wedges that come after that, yeah. you don't tend to hit quite, or you shouldn't really hit quite so full. Yeah. So you might look at something different in terms of shaft setup and bits and pieces there, but yeah. yeah. Right, I think we've got the gap covered there because that's 121. So then again, it's just a, 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 the same again, working backwards. The next one you need to go. 105 ish yeah. yeah so and then thinking back to what we did loft wise you've gone 45 in the pitching wedge 50. 50 yeah so logically split the difference 55 55 like it and this is sort of the the next middle wedge isn't it this yeah. is so this is your, your sound wedge yeah for you know 44 45 46 is kind of traditional sound wedgie. Yeah, but this is a club that I'm probably not gonna really go full out on. No. So we wanna see that it's going maybe 105, but you, it's probably more testing it at maybe outside, looking yeah. at some pitches and yeah. 30, you know, up to sort of 90 yard shots. Yeah. But good to know how far it will go if it is called upon for that. Just come and have a look at this number. We wanted 105. And we got 105. 
before we just get into the next part of the video, guys, I want you to just hit that subscribe button down there for me. Totally free to do. If you're enjoying the videos and the content, there's plenty more to do. Hit the subscribe button. Let's get back into this wedge guide. So we've come outside now, because this is probably an area where this sort of in-betweeny club, I think, you should test around here. Yeah. And what would it be that you're looking for from this club to perform in maybe a, a 30 yard pitch? It might be something where I'm going over a bunker a bit more, but I'd probably say it's the that half swing pitch yeah. maybe. Yeah, I think you just want to make sure that you're comfortable hitting that shot. Yeah. Um, I think this, depending on turf conditions as well, is where bounce comes into play. Yeah. Um, we'll be looking at you know how you deliver the club into the ball, making sure that it's not digging, yeah. getting through the turf cleanly, and just allowing you to hit the shots that you, you want to hit. Yeah. And what, as we sort of touched on earlier, bounce being our friend, I think for the majority of people watching are probably maybe that mid to higher end of the, the handicap yeah. spectrum, or maybe just starting the game. Yeah. Probably is a if you were to pigeonhole them, yeah, get higher bounces, go higher than you think, yeah. yeah. So, as you said, this is probably the, the do it all club. We've mm -hmm. just been hitting the 30, 40, 50 yard pitch there, yeah. but this is where now you talk about opening it out. And mm -hmm. I think this is probably a club that, and I don't know if you agree with this you probably need to spend a bit more time yeah. testing because that gap wedge, I feel like, was more about the out and out yardage, yeah. making sure that was right, as where this one is the versatility. Yeah, I think you, typically you're asking a lot more in variety of shots from this club than the other one. And hit that shot, that's what we're looking for. Nice little soft pitch, and that's just that opening of the face, yeah. and that's where that grind yeah, aspect correct. comes into it. Even a bit more clear. We'll take it. So nice. I think that do it all wedge is, like I say, quite an important one. We want yardage to match the gap, mm -hmm. but yeah. then we want to know that you're able to get it out and hit the sort of half swing, three quarter pitch, then have something that you could maybe chip over a bunker with. Where do we go to after we've got those two boxes ticked? Well, kind of the loft gapping we'll try and keep that the same so you've got yeah. 50 55 so the next logical step would be a 60 yeah now a 60 lob wedge yeah so you won't probably hit this full no very often at all no this is very much in the sand potentially where you need to get it up from a steep lie yeah potentially from kind of this sort of area to this front flag here where you yeah. really need to get it up quick and stop it so it's um yeah it's quite bespoke in, in its need and and, and what we need it to do. Now that we've got into this 60, like you say, that versatility, versatility, bounce and grind get a bit more important yeah. again. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, so there'll be variations on lob wedge loft, so anywhere from kind of 58 to, you know, potentially even up to 62. Yeah. Wouldn't recommend the, yeah. the average goal for using a 62 degree wedge. Yeah. And there's not even many tour players using a 62 degree wedge. So 60 yeah. is kind of the cap. Yeah. Um, again, bounce is your friend and what we tend to do is the higher the bounce the more aggressive the grind is so you maintain the width and the bounce across the sole yeah but you've got more versatility around the around the heel portion yeah right we're done here <laughs> <laughs> And like you say, again, this is an area, just these sort of short pitches, I don't think, the only time I would really try and hit a lob wedge full would probably be over a tree. Yeah. You know, if you're really out of position and it's yeah. getting it that up and over shot. So I'm not even that fussed about testing it. I will get a yardage for it to know how far it would go fully. Yeah. But it's more here and then into the sand. Yeah. Definitely with the with the 54, 55, 56, it's got a dual, dual roll. This is, I would say, more in this area. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. We'll take there that we from there. Let's head into the sand and just talk a little bit what we would mm -hmm. maybe want to see from a lob wedge yep. perspective in a, in a bunker. So in the bunker, what is it I would look for from here? So if we're going to this front flag here, yeah. you're going to be wanting to utilise the, the grind area that's in the sole. So open yeah. the club face up, yeah. going to get the ball up nice and high, but that relief in the heel is going to allow the, the club to slide under the ball and pop it out. Like that? Like that. So for, for a, a higher handicapper, maybe beginner, would you maybe air towards a 58, a 60, what? Um, I think maybe squashing up the yardages, so if you went 50, 54, 58. Yeah. I think 
60 can become a little bit, um, not detrimental, but it's slightly harder to, to utilize for, a, for yeah. a, uh, you know, a higher handicapper. I think what I see a lot of people, they, they get the 60 because they see it a lot on TV. Yeah. Put it in the bag and then when hitting it don't like a realize how hard you've actually got to hit them when you've got even these little yeah, yeah, pitches yeah. like you've got to put some speed and commitment yeah. in which is where probably a lot of problems in the short game lack you know yeah. for a beginner higher handicap or someone who's struggling commitment so yeah. maybe a 58 mm -hmm. might yeah. be a slight help for that obviously you need technique and sound sound technique but that could maybe help nice And I think probably the big thing from this is actually going to try them, isn't it? Yeah. The, there is up like here, you've got a bag full that's mm -hmm. got God yeah, knows yeah. how many in there. As where back in the day, it was put a bit of tape on the face. Yeah, I think so, yeah. The range. Yeah, and you know, putting tape on the face, you're instantly changing the performance off the face. So it's not gonna help you. I think, I think if you're spending the time to get your iron set done, then just at the same time, have the consideration around the wedges. Don't go, I've had my irons custom fit, I'll go and buy a set of wedges off the rack. Yeah. Because it, it just doesn't transcend across. If you spent the time doing it properly, do the whole thing properly. Yeah. So hopefully those three stages are going to help you get the right wedges in your bag. Finding that initial gap in club by testing your pitching wedge loft and distance, then finding that in-between one that is the versatile wedge. It's used for maybe that 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 yard pitch and in and around the green. Then getting that lob wedge that's going to help you over tight shots round bunkers and out of the bunkers. Look at those loft gaps. I think that was a really important piece of information from Al. And also then start to look at maybe that bounce being a little bit higher is most likely going to help a lot more golfers. It's our friend and we want to use it. We don't want to get low bounce just because we've seen the pros using that. So like Al said as well, do go and get your wedges fit. You've spent lots of money on your irons and other clubs. Take time, take care, and you'll probably get the right ones for your game then and start to actually get a better short game. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed that video. As always, remember, hit that like button, follow the channel, subscribe. It's totally free and we'll see you in another video very soon.